All right. Um, let's just first uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me. And um, my first question would be the election is three weeks away, less than three weeks away. Right. And um, you're going up against John Curtis again, like in 2016. Right. How do you feel your campaign's going so far? Um, I am. Um, when, when folks ask, I say I am cautiously optimistic. Um, I have a I try to always have a positive outlook on things, and certainly um, I take that same outlook um, on this um, upcoming election. So um, we've worked extremely hard, and uh, hopefully the, it will uh, pay off um, on November 6th. What are you doing differently to get out the vote? So um, we're not really doing a lot uh, differently than we would normally do. Um, I have um, always taken the attitude since um, I have uh, been in office that um, if, you, if you get up every day and you do the right thing by people um, and, and I attend events um, across um, the, the, the district, which is all our part of eight counties, um, on a regular basis. So I don't just show up in an election year. Um, I'm, I'm always at events throughout. So I don't really do anything differently, um, certainly. Um, when it comes to um, media and that kind of thing, that's, that's different than what you would normally do on a regular basis. You speak about showing up to events, yeah. being involved and active in the community. However, the last League of Women's Forum, um, John Curtis said, just as a lot of other um, community members have said, well, Noreen Hammond, she's not present enough. She's not around enough. What do you say to that? Well, I say um, that the 93rd district that I represent, as I mentioned, is all or part of eight counties. So um, I may not be in um, their moment in time, um, but I am somewhere, trust me. Um, I don't miss uh, very many events uh, throughout the district. And, and we have to keep in mind that it's not just um, Macomb and the surrounding area or McDonough County, um, it's, it is one of the largest uh, districts geographically in the state. So you're running for fifth term, why? Um, I am because I believe that I've done a good job, um, particularly for our constituents um, in the district. Um, my office um, and my staff, and, and I have to give um, kudos to them for the work that they put in uh, day after day. Um, helping um, individuals or groups um, with issues that they have within state agencies, be it um, you know something uh, with the the Department of um, Human Services or uh, DCFS or Department of Revenue, Department of Corrections, it, just across the whole gamut. Um, I I feel like our office does a, a very good job of responding to the needs of the constituents. And, and also I try to um, work very closely with um, communities, um, mayors, county boards, city councils on, on some of the issues that they're facing and, and how we might be able to help address them. But why should the voters of the 93rd District re-elect you? Sure, um, I think uh, first and foremost, my, my um, a record of, of voting and, and uh, voting for um, issues that people in this district um, care deeply about, um, particularly um, funding for education. Um, our our K through 12 new education funding formula that was put in place last year, um, and this is the second year that we have put another additional $350 million into. Um, the schools in the 93rd district do extremely well um, with this new funding formula, extremely well. Um, then I would point to um, the work that I've been doing um, with our higher ed working group. And we have been uh, diligently working to um, address how we keep Illinois students in Illinois, in our universities and our community colleges. And we've made a number of strides this year um, with the four-year MAP program that's going into effect. and. Um, the AIM High program, which is the $50 million matching grant uh, program for scholarships and waivers for Illinois students. So that work we're continuing. We meet on a regular basis. We're going to meet again next week. Um, we're kind of uh, starting to look at how we fund um, higher education in Illinois. 
And then I would also um, bring up uh, work that I do for um, uh, veterans, those that have served our country, and uh, certainly seniors are um, a big part of the work that I do. Yeah, you're starting to mention some of the more pressing issues and things in our district. Do you feel the state provides enough support for WIU? Well, um, I look at higher education across the board, and um, when, when I look back at the funding uh, that was pre-2002, um, it was, we were, we in higher education, those of us that care about higher education, um, were in um, a much better state financially um, back then than we are today. Um, if, if we look at the Blagojevich eras, um, higher education funding was decimated, absolutely decimated. And we, we need to start this trend back to um, the, the value of higher education, um, community colleges, for Illinois, and the focus has to be on how we get the dollars to the students so they're, they want to come to school in Illinois. Um, you know, we, we've seen a lot of poaching from our neighboring states. Um, we need to get into that poaching business, and I think that we can do that by um, focusing where we put the dollars for higher education. And we're looking at that when we look at our funding formula. I mean, but here at WIU across the board, universities are struggling to stay afloat and there's um, programs that are being cut. You have the uh, teacher layoffs and then there are buildings that are being uh, torn down. What will you do to help WIU stay? So one of the things that um, we did in, in this year's budget, um, and, and aside from the, the budget that was passed last year, but in this year's budget to address the, the, the deferred maintenance in particular, um, there is $100 million that is set aside for higher education. Um, Western Illinois University, I believe, gets um, five or seven million dollars of that money um, to address some of their deferred maintenance issues. So um, that is certainly a start that will be helpful. Um, as, as far as the, the programs, um, I, I'm not going to dictate to any university, Western Illinois or any university, what programs um, they should and should not focus on. There are um, people that make those decisions and, and, and that is in, in their wheelhouse. Um, but I can help them by providing funding um, and a higher level of funding um, as we move forward um, for, for them to operate. Um, I look at Eastern Illinois University and we talk about, you know, Western um, had a, a, a decrease in enrollment and I'm hoping that we're going to see across the board um, with some of the things we're putting in place that um, that trend is, is over. Um, but when we look at Eastern Illinois University and their 7% uh, gain in um, enrollment, um, the community got behind them. The community put up scholarships for um, students to uh, attract them to Charleston. Um, that was the Charleston community that did that. Um, the faculty is, is on board and, and, and uh, being very vocal about um, why it's important to come to Eastern Illinois University and, and the students are out there as well. So when I see that power and that um, that, that positive energy, um, I think that that needs to be something that we see um, across the state um, at all our universities and community colleges. So anything specifically that you're still going to do to help WIU? Well, I think I mentioned we are working with our higher ed working group on a lot of initiatives to help higher education, um, to help get funding um, directed into higher education. And um, as we continue um, working on this upcoming budget, which will begin again um, anew um, after uh, January, um, we just have to focus. Um, we've done a great job on K through 12 and funding K through 12. Um, now our focus um, has to be what are we going to do uh, to, to build up higher education funding um, as well. And we just have to identify where that revenue is going to come from. You bet.
Uh, you're not in support of the progressive state income tax. You were saying that at the last week of women's forum. Why? Um, I have uh, seen states that have uh, the progressive income tax in place, and it hasn't been as successful as they had hoped it would be. Um, and by that I mean it was touted as it was going to be um, a tax on the wealthy and not on the middle and lower incomes, um, when in fact they found out, um, oh, wait a minute, we don't have the revenue we need by just taxing at this level, so we're going to have to tax here, 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 and here. And uh, my, my biggest concern with it is the fact that um, it, Mr. Pritzker, who's running for governor and, and um, is very much in favor of the um, graduated tax, um, as, as well as on others, my opponent included, they, they are hesitant to put out a plan. So you're just supposed to jump on board, but what's the plan? Where, where is the tax plan? And you know, it, it's like, well, just trust me, it'll be okay. Well, that's not how I can operate. And the only plan I have seen um, has been put out by um, uh, the House Democrats, and um, it doesn't just tax uh, the, the higher incomes. Um, it, it, in fact, starts taxing at an income of $7,500. And then the next level is $15,000 a year and then it goes upwards from there. Um, that's, that's not a tax that I see protects the lower and middle incomes. How do you feel the current state of Illinois is? Any areas need to be improved? Oh, I think we have lots of areas for improvement in the state of Illinois, but um, again, I go back to the fact that I, I try to remain positive and um, nothing has ever changed with the geography of the state of Illinois. Um, we still have um, a, a, a great, center in, in um, infrastructure, in, in railroads, in, uh, you know, we, we are bordered by two rivers for navigation and, and uh, moving products across our locks and dams, which we are beginning to address some of the concerns with our locks and dams as well. Um, we, I say the federal government is. Um, so we have everything here for us. Um, Chicago has some great enter entertainment, some great tourism. And we just need to get back to where we were decades ago um, as one of the, the prime places to be and to do business in. But we can't do that with a lot of the regulations that we currently have in place. So um, we as a legislature cannot create jobs, but we can certainly create an environment um, that is enticing to employers uh, to come to Illinois because we have everything they need as far as infrastructure. Yeah, you brought up infrastructure. How are you working to improve that? So um, we have um, recently in the last couple of years, there was lots of discussion on uh, the motor fuel tax and the fact that uh, those funds were being swept and used for to pay other bills other than um, transportation needs. Um, we put a referendum on the ballot to um, a, put a lockbox on those funds, if you will. And so um, moving forward, um, those funds that, are, um, that are, are motor fuel tax funds cannot be spent in any other area um, but as they are intended. So that's one area that's going to be very helpful um, for our infrastructure. Again, I mentioned um, the $100 million for deferred maintenance for um, universities, but in the budget was um, a $600 million total um, to address um, our infrastructure and our deferred maintenance um, across the state in our um, uh, many of our state buildings. So um, we, are, we are doing um, some, some positive things there. Um, Amtrak funding is something that has always been very important to me, and we have maintained that $52 million in Amtrak funding as well. What are you hearing from constituents on what's important to them? I think for most of them, um, when, they, when they talk about um, their, their younger children that are in, in school, they are um, breathing a sigh of relief for um, the fact that we have this new funding formula in place and they are beginning to see the results of it. And um, it's, it's, it's very helpful. 
Um, we have to do a better job um, in Illinois of um, addressing our teacher shortage. Um, there were changes made back in um, 2010, they took um, effect in 2011, that changed a lot of the certification process for teachers. Um, I, it, was, it was very well intended, um, but it has, not, um, it, it has not produced the results that um, many thought it would. And instead, um, it, it, has, um, it, it has stifled many individuals that um, wanted to go into education and find that um, this credentialing, is, is this certification process is um, much more difficult um, than it is in many of our other states, many of our surrounding states. So um, I think that that's um, one of the things that people talk about um, uh, oftentimes. Uh, property taxes is another um, issue uh, that, that people are very, very concerned with. And, um, you know, why, why, don't, why doesn't the state of Illinois lower the property taxes? And the state of Illinois doesn't have to lower your property taxes. Um, you can go to your mayor and your city council and ask them to lower your property taxes. Um, when, when my colleagues that complain about um, how high their property taxes are, and yet they're spending $32,000 a year um, to educate each of the students in their, in their schools, I, I just shake my head. You know, we don't have that kind of money available. Um, and so if, if you're unhappy with, with your taxes in Wheaton or Lake Forest or wherever it might be, um, there are local bodies that can lower those. You don't need to push it off on the legislature and say, eh, no, let's just send it up to, to them and, and let them handle it because I don't want to wear that collar. Um, that's, that's another area that, that certainly we talk about is property taxes. Do you feel you have a strong name and experience in this area that is going to really, really help um, push for another win to that fifth term? Um, I, I do because I try to be very visible. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think that um, I, I'm, I'm very approachable um, with people and so um, I think that, that that is going to be helpful, certainly. Um, I also have been... Um, I have been endorsed by a number of, of entities that um, I am particularly honored to have their endorsement. Um, the Illinois Education Association, um, who represent teachers, um, Illinois Retired Teachers Association, um, the Illinois Farm Bureau. Uh, agriculture is uh, the number one industry in the state and certainly in this district. Um, the uh, uh, Illinois Association of Firefighters, um, the Fraternal Order of Police, um, I can go on and on. So I, I have, um, I think I have the support of a lot of um, entities that, that represent the interests of this district as well. From when you first started wanting to run for office as a state rep here in, here in this district, is there anything you're still working towards to accomplish to get that goal? Well, <laughs> you know, let's start with um, adequate funding for, um, education across the board. Um, we've done well with, with K through 12 in the last two years. Um, that's got to be maintained. Um, we haven't done as well with higher education, so that's the goal that has to be attained. And, and um, you know, it's critical not just for this area, but for the entire state. And um, I, th I think when we talk about um, agriculture, there are a lot of things that um, we can do as a state um, there's a lot of things that we rely on the federal government for, but there are a lot of things that we can do as a state to promote um, our number one industry in the state. So, um, I, you know, I think that there are lots of things that we um, continue to work on. Um, I have a number of long-term care issues that I have been working on for uh, three and a half years and, and we're not done yet. So um, there's, always, there's always something that you can work on. There's always something to sink your teeth into. Yeah. What are some of those myths or things that you just, you hear from people, even if they're rumors about you, about how you're doing things? Anything that you want to set straight and get the point across that that's not the case? 
Oh, I don't, I, I don't know. I think, you know, when I, when I hear every now and then somebody will say, yeah, no, she doesn't, I never see her, she's not visible. I'm like, really? <laughs> look, you might look at my schedule? But, um, so that's, you know, that's one thing. Well, I, you know, I never see her. Do, do you come out of your house? Um, so that you know, that's just um, something that I I just kind of shake my head. But but those are things that you can't let them own you. Um, if if you know in your heart of hearts that um, that's that's just something being thrown out there, um, you have to move on. Um, and and um, I I do a better job of that, uh, Devin. I think than I used to. Um, you know, I used to let things eat me up, and, and you, you can't. You just can't. You have to, um, you have to continue on your mission of uh, doing the best, very best you can um, for the people that you care about. Um, as far as some of the issues that um, people are really looking at from Curtis and what you're putting out there, Anything that you feel really sticks out between what he's wanting to fight for or go to be the state rep for that you feel that, no, that shouldn't be the priority here? Uh, um, if I'm being honest, I really haven't heard, um, I haven't heard anything that's got any meat to it. I haven't heard anything really concrete. From him. Uh, correct. Um, so I haven't heard a lot about policy or, or, or um, process there. So um, I would be, um, I, I don't, you know, we talk about progressive income tax. He's all about that. But again, there's no plan. Um, I, I, I've seen a plan and I don't support that plan. So, um, you know, just we're, we're going we're gonna to create jobs. I don't know how you create jobs. So um, there, there is not um, a lot that I, that I can um, say, no, that's the wrong policy because I'm not really hearing policy. So you're saying you walk the walk, or you talk the talk and you walk the walk, but right now he's just doing the talk the talk. And that was your words, Devin. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, I haven't, you know, I, I hear things, but I don't, there's nothing to back it up. Yeah. How about just still, are you going door to door? Are you increasing your social media presence? What are you doing really to get your name out there, even though you, you feel that it, it is already as being the uh, local official? Sure. What are you doing? Sure. Um, we are we are door to door. I I keep in mind first and foremost that um, I have been elected to do a job. Um, I have been elected to be a state representative and represent the legislative issues in the district. So that is my first priority. Um, I spend a, a, a great amount of time um, in that role, um, but I don't miss a beat. Um, when it comes to uh, door to door, um, getting out to functions. I mean, I am door to door constantly. I just don't choose to put it all on, on social media. Um, our, our, our social media is more um, of an informative um, thing. For example, yesterday I was um, at a, a school in, um, over in Mason County for principal for a day. Those are the kind of things that I think is important um, to, to let people know um, what you're doing, whose lives you're touching. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to tell people that, you know, I've, I've knocked on 42 doors in this zip code today, um, they don't really care. They don't really care. If they know you're out there, and, and they do because they see you, um, that's important. Okay. This last question. Um, if you were to lose this election, what would be next for you? Um, I have um, a husband that I think um, loves me. We, are, we will celebrate our 40th um, wedding anniversary next month. And um, we have a daughter who is um, 36. Um, my husband still is very active. He is a, a small business owner. He owns a, his own interior design business. And um, I have 
um, always found um, ways to, uh, to get out there and, and be active in the community, um, certainly in, in this community and others. So um, I don't think that that would stop and, and uh, I would just find um, other areas to, um, to, to get into and get interested in. No other office or anything you would <laughs> look into? Uh, you know, I'm not going there. <laughs> anything else that you would like to? Yeah, I just add? appreciate the opportunity 